Okay, so I'm going to talk about bilingualism today. And I'm sure some of you have started applying for jobs or have applied for jobs in the past. And even maybe Kevin's looking after grad school, going to be really competitive in the job field right now. But that's just rea the reality of the job market. So you've probably applied to lots of jobs in the past, and you'd be lucky to even hear back for one for an interview, let alone an actual job offer. So being bilingual is one of the many things that could set you apart. So I think that's one of the large advantages of being bilingual. And it would actually keep, like you could keep up with your competitors around, and it would increase job opportunities. And through increasing job opportunities, it could actually lead you to be able to travel more and transfer through different countries if your company is worldwide. So bilingualism obviously means being fluent in two different languages, but I'm going to talk about kind of like the process before you get to that point. So I chose to talk about this because it's an integral part of who I am. I've lived in several countries and I've learned a lot of languages over the years, and those languages and being exposed to the culture and living in those countries have become a part of who I am, and they're a part of my identity. And I'm always constantly asked, after I list the, the number of countries that I've lived in, I'm always asked, how many languages do you speak? But what I realized through coming here to America, what, I have, what I'm rarely asked is, how does the whole process of traveling and moving around a lot and learning different languages actually has affected me as a person or emotionally or things like that? So I'm normally stared out in awe and fascination when I list all the places that I've lived in and the languages that I speak. But what some people fail to realize is that it wasn't really by choice that I moved around, and it wasn't by choice that I learned these languages. It was by a means of survival and to be able to function and just strive in those societies that I lived in at the time. And another thing that I noticed is that no one ever seemed to expect me to list these languages, kind of like I shouldn't be able to know them, and I shouldn't be able to... It's like a presumption that they have that being who I am or what I look like, you shouldn't be able to do what I can do. But I've worked hard at learning them, and it's always a constant learning process. So I'm going to shed some light on what it feels like to kind of learn a language. So I always start with being immersed in a culture and in a country that I, under I don't understand at all. Like I try to research as much as I can and understand what to do and what not to do in general and to function in society. But when you don't understand a single thing of what anybody is saying around you, it's really tough at first. And then you start to learn a couple key words, such as, like, where is the bathroom, and how do I find this, and how do you say this. But then the lo some people assume that you're, you're fluent, and then they start talking to you in really complex sentences, and then you're like, oh, hell, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so you just stand there and just nod along and go, like, yep, okay, yeah, I totally know what you're saying. And I, one of the things that I learned really quick was to say I don't understand in whatever language I was learning. And that's a really key phrase. You wouldn't think it's so important, but it's actually a lot more important than you would imagine. So I actually have a story about this. I landed in Egypt, and the flight attendant was trying to talk to one of the gentlemen and trying to tell him that he can exit through the back of the plane, which was closer to him than the front exit of the plane. And she was trying to say it in like a bunch of different languages that she knew, except for Arabic. So I stepped in, and I told him, and he just completely freaked out that me being who I am, and I was there alone as well, and that I could tell him this instruction like, to get off the plane from the back. And then he turned around and told all his friends and the rest of the people on the back of the plane, and everyone else was freaking out about that. And I'm like, well, this is awkward. I don't understand anything that you're saying. I can say that, and that's it. So I'm going to leave now. But then you, under you start understanding the conversation around you, and then you get to the point where you want to respond and you want to join in the conversation and start communicating, but your grammar doesn't make any sense at all. Like two-year-olds can speak better than you can. But you try, and the majority of the time people appreciate it, and they can understand the gist of what you're saying, and they correct you, which really helps because that teaches you like the syntax and the gramma grammatical structures of sentences. So as a psych major, I can rarely have normal conversations with people without stating research findings, because that's who you are. And that comes with the territory. And this isn't going to be any different. So research states that every time you learn a new language and you start speaking that language, your personality actually changes. So I actually, can, I actually relate to that, and I actually think that it's pretty valid from my personal perspective because when I speak Arabic with, with certain people, I feel that I'm a, I have a different personality than when I speak English and when I speak Spanish. Like I can feel a physical change that happens when I switch between the languages. And 
I feel like the customs and the country and the people and the experiences that you learn while you're in while you're learning the language also like it also becomes a part of you and therefore that's what changes your personality as well. But the other thing about learning a new language is that you learn to express yourself in many different ways and you learn to express yourself in ways that you never thought were possible. And what's kind of frustrating about that as well is that there's certain words that don't that only exist in one language and they can't be translated in another language. So while you're trying to communicate a feeling or an idea in one language that could be easily you you could easily do the same thing in just one word, but you have to use examples and synonyms and just a whole paragraph when you could easily explain the same thing in one word. It just seems like a waste of time and it gets kind of frustrating after a while. But learning a new language allows you to communicate with more people, but it also allows you to be able to help other people around you. So sometimes when the Saudi Arabian students on campus don't understand or they need help finding things, like I can communicate with them in Arabic and that helps them and makes them feel more comfortable in general. And then the other thing that I realized too is that by connecting with other people, you can still connect with that culture and learn about a culture that became a part of you that no one else in general can understand or even relate to. So when you find that connection with someone, it just makes you feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more at home because you find another part of you that's being satisfied, like another part of your personality that's being satisfied by communicating with that person. And one of my favorite things about a new language is being able to understand and connect with the music because there's a lot of ideas and a lot of feelings that are being expressed through the lyrics and the lyrics are always unique to that specific country. And the other things that are even, like more things that, yeah. there are a lot of things that are expressed through music and one of the things could be like political issues that you can understand and relate to because you understand that language. So in the end, even though it's been really trying over the last couple of years and it's been really difficult to try and keep all the languages up to the pace that I had them before, I've gained a lot of experiences and a lot of benefits through traveling and the ability that I have to communicate and connect with people I really think is really invaluable and I don't think it can be replaced by anything. And the ability to understand and connect to different traditions and different ways of lives I think just makes me more accepting of different cultures and I think that's really valuable considering what's happening around the world nowadays. I got really red.